obviously when you introduce this kind of a policy there is a lot of engagement and advocacy that needs to be done so to me i think that is one area that i think we would really want to up our game on so that at least the communities understands what we really need to do as a ministry and as government i think i've talked to you about uh, some of the cultural practice that impede our girl child accessing education these are deep rooted uh, you know cultural issues that we need to tackle uh, very carefully but in a very sustainable way so when you you dealing with culture it's not generally very easy you then need to engage more and more and more so that you can then be able to have some kind of a sustainable model of the policy if they are not being adequately served supported encouraged empowered by the education system i you know if, if that's what's happening to women then it's a problem um and, and i think it ha has to be addressed so but uh, it was about making a difference and making an impact uh, at that level of particularly around the school leaders because they are at that's in you know, very, very influential in, in what happens in schools. And I think part of our calculation was you've, you've, you've got to get the leadership right at the school level. And that's what's going to drive change um, within the system and, and support girls and support, you know, teaching and learning, you know, in general. So, you know, it's, it's not about disadvantaging boys, but it's really about making sure that girls have um, similar opportunities. We were not even taking this, uh, this gender issue seriously, but after the workshop, we really came back home with another mind. And uh, we started to view, as we were there, you could also look back and see what was being said there, whether it was affecting you and your school. We learned a lot concerning what instructional leaders, as leaders, uh, what we expected to do, our duties to promote gender sensitivity and even to influence change in our organizations. You know, when you are a leader, sometimes you just feel I can push people around. And But when we went for this program, it was emphasized that teamwork is key to an institution. And when you begin to implement it, the, the teachers become colleagues, results or translate into good performances. Because they are saying, I cannot let down my colleague. We also learned the issues of collaboration. Our classes are in pairs. You know, when we begin to work together, trying to emphasize collaboration, you can now see them sharing ideas. There's no longer that cutthroat competition. They are, say, they are now saying, let's move together. Let's have the same results. And if the weaker one is being pushed by the stronger one, you are seeing better results in both the classes. I think mostly why this program actually was the best for us was we were hit hard by the COVID year, which made most of our learners fall behind, way, way, way behind. Because if we were to take our current grade sixes, they skipped two full years of learning. So we undertook a, a reading program because we had a challenge with some of our grade threes and in the infants. They were really not literate enough. I mean, basically we're saying a school, learners must be able to write the ability to read. That's why we came up with this particular program to say, let's eradicate non-readership in our school. Just imagine if you can get all learners in grade one and grade two reading, and they proceed to grade three as perfect and readers who can comprehend and can answer. There is no way you can have a, a, a zero percent at grade seven level. Previously, we used to talk about gender issues for so many times, but really we never implemented things. It is only now, uh, after this program, we were transformed to see things differently in such a way that uh, it is helping us in the classroom. It is motivating, especially learners. 
we have uh, realized girl children, they can even do things we thought boy children could do, they could do it them better. In the classroom, we observed when we do lesson supervisions that the girls, they, at times, they are inferior to raise up their hands. And yet, they will have the correct answer. They will believe that only boys can do that, or so and so will do that. Now, proficient teaching will require you to get deeper into learners and probe questions further. So we are still we are inculcating this in our teaching staff, and some of them are adapting to it very well, showing inclusivity, which is a major, major, major important uh, role of us because it actually improves the teaching and learning process. I, I think uh, as you approach the school, you, can, you, you saw the environment. That's an impact through the program. It has changed from where it was to where it is today. That's number one. Number two, change in behavior for everyone, including me. Yeah, including me. Changing my mindset, you know? You, you don't forget that it's a leading learning for gender equality. It means uh, there, is, there are elements of gender that are included in the program. If you just look around in our classrooms, you would see that it's an impact. If you look at our staff members, you would see that it's an impact. If you get into my office, look from the charts, you, it will tell you that something has changed. Uh, there's something unique within the institution, which you may sometimes not find in other inst institutions. So that's the impact. If you go and check on our results, 100% consecutive, no, not this year, we are talking of 100% pass rate for two consecutive years. That's a very high impact for the, uh, uh, for, for, for the program. Mm -hmm.